Welcome back to the floor. <laughs> so today we're going to be working on the F3 here a little bit. When I got this thing, the hardware that was used to attach my seat back to the direct backrest adapter, well, they didn't use the correct hardware when the DME put the chair together. Uh, I mentioned this in a previous video. It's not the most egregious thing in the world, but it's been squeaking and making weird noises and, well, ever since I saw the improper hardware, which I'll show you in a second, has been triggering my OCD. I've been using this chair for the last year, hasn't been an issue, but uh, I've gone and purchased, where is it? But I've gone and purchased about 17 some odd dollars of stainless hardware. And we're also going to play around with reattaching some of these plastics because they've got Velcro that holds that on and there's gaps here and all kinds of fun stuff. My energy levels today are not awesome. I, uh, I'm actually going to be going back in to see my pulmonology team. Every time I go in, I meet with three different people. But I just haven't been recovering the way I feel like I should from that trip in California when I had the breathing machine fiasco. So anyways, um, I can do this video here in the bus. I was going to drive out to the warehouse, but anyways, whatever. So I'm going to get this backrest off of here. And then we're going to look at replacing that hardware and then maybe look at reattaching some of this stuff here in a more better -er -er way. <laughs> Now my plan here is I'm only getting on the floor once. So in theory, we should be able to do all of this. I have all of my tools that I need right here and everything. So hopefully this will work. Um, removing the seat backs from these direct backrest adapters is pretty easy. I don't think you can see it, but there's a little latch over here. And uh, you just flip that and then a uh, more able-bodied person would be easier to do, but this whole thing just comes right off and it's super heavy. So I'm going to turn the chair around. Oh, also we're going to be, um, don't fall over. We're also going to be changing out the, um, grip tape on these foot plates. I know I've done a couple videos about that and I will link them up above and or down below, but I was at the mall yesterday. And I found this grip tape that I think would be outstanding <laughs> to put on my foot plates. So we're probably going to put the, the cat face on one side and then the, the birds flying out of his hands on the other or something. But we'll get to that a little bit later. I just, I just thought this was hilarious. Also, I'm curious to see how white grip tape will hold up on this chair with my feet on it. And oddly, I have not done, I have not done the mod on this chair yet. I'm still using the same skate shoes. These things are like nine years old. And surprise, surprise, they're designed to work with grip tape. So anyways, um, let's get the backrest off of here. Oh, my left arm isn't so hot at the moment either. I'm not sure what's going on there. Ow. <clears throat> okay, out of the way, chair. Oh, by the way, Thank you to the person that sent me these little decals like four years ago. I, I just finally, uh, finally got it installed on my seat back. <laughs> oh, this floor is not very clean. I probably should have put something down. I'll just use my legs for now. That keeps this off the floor. Okay, here's our direct backrest adapter. I'm using uh, Stealth Products ADI uh, some dust deep curve backrest kind of hard to film because it's dark colored but here's the problem eh, that we're dealing with if you look real close at this nut here it is not the right size and well all of them see how there's no washers oh that one's loose now too and they're just kind of digging down in here so there's no washers there and there should be and these these are flat cut holes on the inside, they use machine screws, which have tapered heads. So those are kind of gouging out the inside. Actually, I just thought here, I should probably mark these out with a Sharpie before we get too crazy here. Oh, that's a fine point. Uh, maybe that'll work. Because for me, having the backrest in the proper position 
in relation to my seat cushion is extremely important. Uh, all right, let's get this fabric off of here now. Uh, I just hate removing the fabric because it's a whole thing trying to get it back on there so it's like straight and everything. Oh man, look at that dust. It has finally started raining here in Portland. So we should be switching over to mud flying through the air instead of, uh, what you call it, dust. Uh, it looks like our little strip has come off of here too. Oh, there are some foam pads in there. Interesting, did not know that. You gotta be careful when you pull some of this off because this Velcro, while it is glued on, can very easily become uh, detached if you just rip it off of there. All right, let's throw that over there. Ah! <laughs> okay, so make sure your chair is off when you do that because, okay, power's off. <laughs> just saw there, my chair started driving. Okay. First off, let's uh, let me turn up this light a little bit here. I'm using some little video lights because you know, floor of the bus. Yes, yeah, so our little trim pieces here have kind of come off. These aren't too big of a deal though. I think they just kind of kind of push back on here roughly. They do not appear to be glued in place. Oh, that was it. I meant to order some more black hot glue. I keep losing the stuff that I have. Oh, here, we're gonna have to pull this all the way off, I think. Yeah. Oh, there is some glue in there. Oh, huh, interesting. Um, maybe we can just stretch this. I should probably be careful doing this so I don't bruise my legs with this sharpened metal that I keep throwing down here. Well, anyways, we'll screw with that later. Here's what I was talking about on the inside. See, we've got uh, pan head machine bolts in here in this slot. There, see, you can see how they're dome shaped. <laughs> that is not the proper hardware that's supposed to go in here. In fact, I'm going to also mark the position of these just to make things easier on myself. Oh, actually, it looks like it's as high as it can go. Oops, sorry, I've been zoomed in there. Yeah, it looks like it's adjusted as high as it can go, so these marks are probably not that important. Okay, whatever. Um, oh, I left my my Allen keys over there. Oh, wait a minute. I think we have a solution to this. It may result in making a mess, but world's longest grabber stick. Let's see, can I do this without spilling all these? Careful link. Ah. Aha, look at that. I got my little super handy portable socket set here. Someone got this for me for Christmas years ago. And it's oh, fly zapper. It's gotta be one of the handiest things I've ever had. And it's got one of these little stubby ratchets with three eighths and quarter on um, on both sides or whatever. So let's go ahead and get these things off of here. I guess I could just do these one at a time and then we won't have to worry about it. Yeah, so here's the hardware they were using. Um, not exactly what you want for this. So I bought a whole bunch of stuff here. So it's probably more expensive than it needed to be because I went with uh, stainless hardware. Actually, here, let's just uh, let's make this into a dispenser bag. There we go. So I got a few different versions here. We've got some. Uh, flange head screws, and then these guys. And I think these, yeah, with some nylocks and washers because washer. So I think these should be the way to go here. Let's stick.
stick a washer on there. Feed this through from the front. Another washer on the back. I just kind of eyeballed most of this for size, so they might be a little small, but I think we should still be okay. Ah, balls. Yeah, I went too small. That washer is still not fully engaging. Um, however, I don't think I could have gone too much wider on this bolt because it just barely fits in there. Ah, okay, well, I think what this means is I'm going to have to get back in my chair and grab my other hardware kit from under the bus. Didn't really want to do that. Um, I'll give me a few minutes. I'll see if I can figure something out. Yeah, so here you can see the slots on this bracket are significantly wider than this. I've got some quarter 20 washers that I think should work. We'll probably just use those in conjunction with the stainless ones. But yeah, see how this hole's kind of rounded out? Like I said, not the biggest thing, really, but like, it'd be nice to have this done properly. I'll be back. Not only was this down in the basement, but it was also completely buried. Um, oh. I think these are the smallest washers I have. I mean, I guess these might work. Eh, hang on, I got, I got one more bin of stuff. And eh, no washers in there either. Okay, so now maybe I can see why they picked the hardware they did. They didn't wanna run to a hardware store or something. Eh, this requires coffee. And I'm just kind of mocking this up here. See how terrible it'll look. Oop, that is smaller than that. So it looks okay on this side. Not gonna see that anyways. Yeah, I think if we do that thing where I just kind of square up the washer and then tighten it down, it should tick all the OCD boxes. Yeah, there we go, I think that'll work. Yeah, look at that. Almost looks like it's supposed to be there. Sweet, how's the inside doing? Yeah, that metal's a little bit worn away but uh, we've got some bite on there. All right, cool. Well, this is gonna work good enough for me. Um, oh, I suppose I could stick one of the larger washers inside here too. I mean, no one's gonna see that. However, I got these bolts so that they were just barely long enough. Wait, do I have longer ones? <gasps> I do, I bought some longer ones. Okay, well anyways, enough of this. I'm going to, I'm gonna go around and fix all this and then I'll come back and show you the final result. We got other stuff to do. Okay, here's where we're at. I went ahead and used the bigger quarter 20 washers in addition to the little teeny tiny these things. And I was able to get them centered up. That hole is just big enough that it starts to flex the washers a tiny bit, but that's okay. It'll work as sort of like a locking mechanism. And then here on the inside, I did the same arrangement. I don't necessarily care what these look like, but we have a nice large uh, surface area here to spread out the load. And another reason I went with stainless is this does get exposed to the rain when you're outside, but also I found that stainless bolts for whatever reason are just a little bit stronger than their grade zero rated counterparts. Um, yeah, so I'm happy with that. Cool, I'm gonna get the other side done, then we're gonna figure out how to put this back on or something. Okay, the other side is now done. As it turns out, I only bought two longer bolts on accident because they were in the wrong spot in the shelf. So I had to run this side without any washers. And by the way, also, these little 25 cent nuts have a very high reject rate. These three are bad. So glad I bought extras. 
Anyways, this will work for now. It's sort of dented the washers a little bit, and these are also nylocks anyways, so I don't think they're gonna be coming out of here. Um, yeah, so anyhow, um, we've got this thing properly attached now. And also on this side, because the nuts weren't long enough, I used two of the smaller washers and made sure they were centered. But two of those stacked up because stainless washers have sort of a flat, rigid edge, and the other side has a little bit of a dome. So I stacked those appropriately, and they have very tightly gripped on each side here. So you can see we've got a good bite on both of these if you look at them straight on. So those aren't going to be going anywhere. And also they kind of dish out as well, which will hold them in place and keep them from rotating. Those are the skid marks from the old hardware that was in there. And by the way, again, they actually use different size nuts. Uh, so that one is larger than this one. And I think one of these machine screws was different as well. So these seating kits come with random hardware and I think they just wound up using whatever they could find. So I don't blame them, I guess. I mean, like I said, it worked for about a year but you'd have to run to the hardware store and get some specific stuff and they probably just want to get this thing out of the door uh, because, you know, reasons. So anyways, uh, I'm gonna get the fabric and everything put back on here. I'm gonna stretch this around and get it on. I, I don't think that's gonna be that interesting. So we're gonna move on to either the plastics or the grip tape next. I'll figure out which, probably the grip tape because that involves less using of power tools and it'll give me a chance to rest. So anyways, I'll be back. Well, I'm in here and I've got this thing on my lap. I'm just gonna go through and check the rest of these bolts and make sure they are in fact tight because over time, these things can come loose or maybe they weren't torqued to begin with, I don't know. It is sort of a, uh, it's not, it's an anodized coating. Whatever the coating is on this kind of uh, creates a little friction layer. So that's what that snapping noise is. Oh, that's right, and some of these are a little bit stripped out too. I think I got these, yeah, I get a little bit of turn out of these. That's the thing with these uh, direct backrest adapters on permobiles is there's a lot of connection points. And over time, stuff can, you know, understandably work loose. So honestly, it probably wouldn't hurt to take all this apart and use Loctite, but after a year of use, this stuff is barely even loose. So I'm not too worried about it. All right, cool. Check my headrest mount bolts. This headrest mount interferes with my ability to recline all the way. I kind of looked at this. There isn't really a way to adjust it. So I'm just gonna, gonna leave it for now. Okay. Oh, I got the, I got the little weather stripping or whatever it's called. Corner bead, corner trim, whatever. I got that put back on here. Turns out there is a bunch of like super sticky glue in there. So I peeled it up from the bottom and went all the way around and then used this as a hammer and just kind of tapped it in all the way around. And I don't know if it shrunk a little bit, but you can see there's the difference in it or whatever. But uh, yeah, cool. I'm happy with this repair. Oh wait, hang on. We got two more, two more bolts to check. Click. And those were tight. I couldn't get them to move. All righty. On to the next thing. Oh, and coffee, where'd it go? Coffee, always coffee. Apparently they make caffeinated water now. Okay, moving on to the arts and crafts portion of the video. We are going to cut up this grip tape here and attempt to put this cat's face on one of the foot plates. Looks like it should fit. Uh, yeah. Now I have shown this a couple of different times. I think there's like probably two different videos I've done this in. So we're just going to kind of breeze through this here real quick. Easiest way I've found to do it is to, well, technically you should probably pre-warm the foot plates so the glue comes off. But basically just pull these things off of here and use them as templates and then put them over the top of your new grip tape trace them and cut them or something. I guess I do have a hairdryer back there. Although I'm already on the floor. I don't really feel like getting back into my chair again. Which, by the way, the backrest is now reinstalled. 
and it doesn't squeak anymore. Okay, so is it more work to try and peel this off with my hands than it is to get back into my chair and get the hair dryer for maybe slightly easier removal? <sighs> I'm just gonna keep doing this. <clears throat> I'll be back in a minute. Ugh. I got one of them off. I'm not sure if Permobile has upped their glue game or uh, this is just because this chair is maybe only a year old, but the stuff, oh, there we go. Apparently it's all about gripping it and ripping it. Ew, should probably get all that dirt out of there. Well, before we do that, we're gonna get these things set up here as templates. I shouldn't have had them roll this up. Now it's gonna be fighting me this whole time. We'll do the left side. So it looks like we can get most of his face. Yeah. So we got both the ears pretty much and most of the face and a lock washer. Yeah, I think that'll work. We'll just trace this out here. Yeah, I think this will be just strange enough to work. Where's my scissors? Um, here they are. Once again, don't use your mom's best sewing scissors for this because reasons. We're gonna cut just inside the line. Okay. See how this fits. Come here, chair. Oh, I gotta clean that dirt out of there. Hang on. Ugh. We're down to the last bit of the Lysol wipes, which means they're gonna be very saturated and probably increase our drying time. So let's just kind of do one of these. There we go. Oh yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> oh man. I'm gonna straighten up this edge here just a little bit. There we go. And let's go ahead and, I guess we'll clean this while we're here. Oh, it's stuck on the floor. All right, wait, which way does this go? That way, okay. I think that should work. Probably be a little bit confusing, but that's kind of the point of this whole thing. This probably also isn't very good for Sharpies. Hell, this is a big market anyways, it's an off-brand. It's not even a Sharpie, so whatever. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit confusing. Um, but hey, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, oh, the light just died. Yeah, there we go. Uh, is it too late to pull this back off? Need to trim right there just a little bit. Yeah. Nice thing about skateboard grip tape is it takes quite a bit of pressure before it becomes like air quote permanent. So you get a little bit of working, working time with it. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. 
This is so confusing. <laughs> Best part is probably almost no one will see this because my feet are on top of it. And there's gonna be an even smaller subset of people that see it and get the reference. So yeah, anyways, there we go. It's uh, uh, new skateboard grip tape. I'm curious though to see how this white will hold up. Um, I do need to get some new shoes still, but whatever. So anyways, ta-da. Oh, and BT dubs, the best way to make sure this stuff is glued on after you get it on here is to use a hairdryer and heat it up. Seems to kind of activate the glue and stuff in there. So um, how do you operate this? Yeah. So I'm just gonna heat this up and then apply some pressure to it once it's warm and we should be good to go. Uh, this is so completely random. And by the way, with this skateboard grip tape, the best way to make sure that this stuff isn't gonna come up is you don't want any edges that are, that are poking up at all. So you wanna make sure you get a nice gap around the edge. This here is pretty close. I should probably trim that a little bit, but you can see how it's just kinda almost sticking up on the edge. If the edge of this is folded up at all like that, then water and dirt and stuff can get down in there and it's gonna make it come off easier. This stuff does work really well though. I've got a couple chairs. I think I put some of this on like five or six years ago and it's still working just fine. So anyways, uh, yeah, there you go. Arts and crafts with hair dryers and uh, offensive cats. What more could you ask for in a video? Okay, it's the next day now and I'm back here on the floor. We've had this grip tape on here, well, overnight. I was kind of wondering about the white uh, printing and if it was going to attract any dirt or whatever, but let's take a look. By the way, I'm waiting for that pellet stove to shut down so it should get quieter here in a couple of minutes. But as you can see, just overnight, there is, well, some of the grip material comes off, which that usually happens a little bit when this stuff is new. But you can see there's a little bit of dark coloration here. And the soles of my shoes are black. But in a few days, once this stuff I know is fully set up, I'm going to try rinsing it off because it should be water resistant, uh, waterproof or something. I don't know. Anyways, we're going to move on to the next part of the video now. I'm going to use some more of this little tiny stainless hardware that I got. And we're going to attempt to shore up some of these plastics, mostly this part right here which is just held on with that industrial hook and loop tape. I think my plan is to just drill a hole through here somewhere. And I'm not sure what I think about the silver showing through. So I may color the heads of these black with uh, an industrial Sharpie or something like that. I'm still having a little bit of issues with being able to talk for extended lengths. So I'm just gonna play around with this. We're gonna let that thing finish shutting down so it gets quieter in here. And then after a little bit of my investig investigatory exploration, I will show you what we come up with. Uh, I might also look at adding some screws to this piece or maybe here. I don't know. I'm going to play around. I'll be back. Okay, so I went ahead and drilled a hole right through this plastic and through the bracket on the back. And I've got a little tiny adjustable wrench holding the nylock on the other side. It was a little bit fiddly to get the nut attached back there. But without tightening that too much and deforming the plastic, that actually seems to be okay. And now we don't have this whole piece flopping around. I don't really mind that little bit of silver sticking out there. I don't think it looks too bad. But I think what I'm gonna attempt next is if you flex this, you can see all of this here still moves and down here. So I'm gonna look at putting a couple of those little screws that are just the right length through this piece of plastic and this one. Cause this, this vibration right here is what I was getting a lot of, especially with these tires. As far as the Velcro that's in here, it does create a gap that allows dirt and stuff to get in there. But I think if I just put one screw right through the Velcro and everything here in the middle, and like, like I said, I'm using these little 
little nylocks on the inside. I think this should be just long enough maybe. That might be a little short. But I'm gonna play around with leaving that Velcro in there. Um, I might pull it out just to get rid of this gap. But anyways, for right now, this seems to work pretty well. And if we look on the inside here, yeah, there you can see, here's the bracket that this attaches to with that Velcro stuff. I know, hook and loop tape, I'm just gonna say Velcro. But you can see that nut sticking up right back in here. And that seems to be a pretty good spot. Once again, it seems strange to me that they would custom make that little bracket and just use Velcro to hold everything on. Um, there's these little socket panel clippy things that hold the two pieces of plastic together. I'm sure that's fine. But yeah, here you can see with this close-up view how this stuff all kind of moves a little bit independently. So I think if we can shore this all up into one piece, we should be good. And when you go to remove this whole assembly, it's basically just going to be this one bolt right here. And when they pull the wheel off, I think you should be able to get all of this off with the two bolts that hold the fender on back there. So anyways, I'm not planning on taking all this stuff apart and it is going to add a little bit more work. If it's, oh, I've got my lights off. There we go. Um, but it is going to add a lot more work if we do need to take this off. Well, not a lot more, but I think it'll be worth the trade-off for all this stuff to not be, you know, rattling around and whatnot. So anyways, I'm going to keep going here and uh, let you know what I come up with. I've decided to go ahead and remove this Velcro in here. I don't think it's really going to be necessary. And the hardware I have is just long enough. Well, it's just short enough right now with this Velcro that I need the extra you know, a few millimeters of spacing for this to fit and not interfere with the tire on the inside. So I just used a box cutter to get the edge up and now I'm just peeling this out of here using a flat blade screwdriver as an assistant. And I think if we put a couple of screws through here, we shouldn't have any rattling issues at all. I'm not too concerned about scratching this up underneath here because it is going to be completely covered. So here's, here's one of our pieces. Here's one of our pieces of that Velcro material. And the other half is up here. So let's see if we can get that out. If I can see anything. Let me get another light over here. Yeah, there we go. You can see that stuff in there now. And once again, to those people that are inevitably going to say something like, Oh, I can't believe you're screwing up your new chair like that. What are you doing? You're voiding the warranty and all this stuff. Well, I do all the work on this chair myself. I don't even take it in. Like, when I need new tires, I will be buying the tires myself and replacing them myself. If something major goes wrong with the chair... I mean, I'll probably have my insurance pay for the repairs, but none of the stuff I'm doing will affect the operation of the chair other than making it quieter and easier to clean. Okay, so you can see our gap here. Yeah, that's gonna be great. So I'm gonna use two of these little Phillips screws. Yeah, you can see we've got basically no gap there now. There will be a little bit so water can get in there, but we're not gonna have it sitting like this and allow chunks of debris and grass and stuff to get in there. So I'm gonna line all this up, drill a couple of holes, and I think we're gonna use some of these little metric thingies. I can't remember the size. And there should be just enough room for this to go through and have a nylock sitting right on the inside here and we'll still have really good clearance for our tires. Um, By the way, the Sharpie Magnum that comes in a metal case is still kind of a throwback to the old school Sharpies that were actually permanent. A lot of things like super glue and permanent markers and stuff over the years 
have been tamed down quite a bit, so they're not nearly as permanent. Like for example, this mark here on my thumb now, I'm gonna be wearing that off for about a week or so because this is truly permanent. There we go. And if we look down in here, you can see there's just enough threads to engage those nylocks. And we still have plenty of clearance for our tires here. Okay, I just discovered there is not quite enough room to run a washer in there and have our nylock um, locking part of the nut engage. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that washer out of there. And it's just, just sitting there in some plastic, so I don't think it's gonna be too big of a deal. I'm not gonna wanna crank these down super tight anyways. Because plastic will crack and stuff, so. I'm just gonna stick this thing on here. This is fairly fiddly work. <laughs> and yes, an end-wrench would be easier, but those are down below in one of the luggage bays. And it's raining really hard, so I don't feel like going out there. Okay, so I don't think that looks too bad. Uh, I might color this one, I'm not sure. But as you can see now, a lot of this is all one piece, and we don't get that rattling anymore. We do still have this piece here. There's not a whole lot of plastic to engage here. So I think what I'm gonna try and do is get one screw right through here. And I think that should finish shoring this up the rest of the way. It's gonna be a little bit tricky to drill that though. So let's see how it works. Now that ended up being right on the corner, so the head of this might be a little bit too wide. Let's see here. Actually, I think that works okay. All right, cool. So the only reason I'm not using these fasteners here is because I did not purchase the Phillips variety in the longer length. As you can see, um, they are quite a bit shorter and there wasn't enough to get a nut and a washer on behind there. So yeah, I think that'll work nicely. Um, cool, I'm gonna pull that back out, paint it black with the Magnum Sharpie and go from there. Now I am gonna use a washer on the inside of this because we're pulling at kind of a strange angle. You can see our plastic curves around that way, but our bolt is like that. So I'm gonna leave the washer in there to kind of spread out the load a little bit. And hopefully we should be good. Trying not to strip out the Phillips head on this thing. Oops. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Oh yeah, such professionalism. All right, cool. I think I'm gonna go back to the hardware store and buy some longer versions of this, because well, that's not too offensive looking. I think I'd rather have this flat head or, you know, a pan head machine screw on there instead of this. But, uh, yeah, let's see here. Oh, that's so much better. So the whole thing still moves now, but it moves all as one unit and there's no rattling at all. See, the problem I have is occasionally I would like knock something over and it would hit the side of my chair and get caught on this and this thing would pop off of here. But now, um, yeah, I like it. Sweet. Well, I'm going to keep looking around and, uh, see if there's some other spots. I, uh, want to affix some things and then I'll be back. I just noticed one other benefit of all this. So previously 
this front fender, because it wasn't really being attached well, would interfere with this front light and the light would collide right here. Now, as you can see, we've got plenty of room and uh, that thing no longer interferes. Cool. I mean, it's still plastic, obviously, but ice maker, by the way. Wait for it. Mmm, ice. Um, yeah, I think I'm happy with this. We do have this giant bolt sticking out here. I might have to color that black or something. Uh, once again, I'm, I'm not too incredibly concerned about looks on this. I would rather have it, what's oh, the term, form over function or whatever. Um, so, yeah, anywho. Sweet. Okay, I've gone ahead and done the other side now. And I do like the look, a little hard to tell with the lighting, but I did color this, uh, uh, what do you call these things? Allen cap bolt. I colored that Allen cap bolt black and I went ahead and did not use washers on this side. This one I got a little bit close to the edge, but I think it's okay. But yeah, same net result. This whole thing acts like one piece now. And we have clearance up here on this light. Uh, that right there is from running into that. I think you can actually see the mark on the bottom of it. But yeah, hashtag bus life. It almost looks like actually we've got, maybe it's just the camera, but no, that wouldn't make any sense. I was thinking it almost looked like we had more of a gap here, but I think that's just an optical conclusion. Maybe it's not, I don't know. But look, our seams here are touching, so we might get water in there, but we're not gonna get, you know, grass and pieces of Cheeto dust and whatever else ends up down here. So yeah, anyways, I think I'm probably gonna call that good for now. <laughs> Once again, it's extremely difficult to keep this chair clean. I cleaned it yesterday and, you know, even in the rain out here in the gravel, it, it's still <laughs> really difficult <laughs> to keep anything clean. Uh, it all comes down to how often do you want to get on the floor and uh, wipe down stuff. Our tire tread's doing pretty good, though. This, I would guess, is probably at about 60% remaining. These rear tires didn't come with a whole lot of tread from the factory, but, yeah, it's eh, maybe 50%, 60%. It's not that worn, though. And our front tires here... Where's my light? Our front tires here are still doing pretty good. They have um, they have lost their dome shape. So maybe you can see it up here. Yeah, so you can see they're kind of flat across the middle now. They used to be a lot more dome shaped. Yeah, you can see it right there. But we still have a significant amount of tread and I've got just over 500 miles on these tires. So yeah. Permobile um, Aggressive Tread for the win. It's actually made by CST. Yeah, yeah they're made by CST tires. Um, they are not Primo Power Tracks. The photo on the Permobile website is incorrect. For some reason, they photoshopped the, uh, the photo of the tires on their chair on the website. <laughs> Anyways, uh, turns out you can, in fact, get these from Build My Wheelchair. We have confirmation now. Uh, someone from the chat, or a long-time channel viewer, or however you say that, has ordered a pair and they've showed up. And they are exactly these same ones. So, not sponsored, but I'll drop a link to that down below. Last check, they were... I think they were each. I think it was 139 each. Which actually is a pretty decent price for black power chair tires. For some reason, when you don't buy these, these gray ones, uh, these things were, I think... $85 or $90 each for those gray ones. But for whatever reason, as soon as you switch to black tread compound, it gets stupid expensive. So 139 each for these obviously isn't free, but it's a lot better than not. So anyways, um, the dust battle is just never ending. <laughs> oh man. All right, well, uh, I'm not sure what's coming next, but I'm gonna clean up all my filth and get up off the floor. Um, Use this information as you will. If you don't care about drilling holes in your chair, as you can see, we've still got plenty of clearance in here. So I think, depending on the color of your chair, it would be a pretty cool look 
to have some stainless fasteners every so often around different plastics and stuff. So anyways, like, uh, like Ry can do it says, if Ry can do it, so can you. Um, yeah, I, I just always think about the comment section, but anyways, I think this is outstanding looking. Okay, that's enough. On to whatever's next. And there we go. Some of the OCD has been mitigated. The rattling is gone. And we have cool offensive grip tape. Oh, and my backrest is now very solid. And, well, there's no squeaking other than the, um, the mounting style. <laughs> of course I say that and it sounds like squeaking, but it's not from those bolts. There is a little bit of movement on the direct backrest adapter, but it feels a lot more solid now. And uh, I know those bolts are not digging into the metal like they should not be. Um, yeah. Meh.